All right, so let's look at determining uh, default squat width. One thing we see is that athletes tend to either squat too narrow or too wide, and we've got to find kind of a happy medium there that best utilizes both their anatomical or structural variants as well as um, their ability to control their midlines, uh, midline and, and pelvis. So what we do is we get in, <clears throat> if you get into a quadruped position, knees over or uh, hips over knees, you're going to have them get into a tight core, starting about shoulder width, which is kind of what a lot of people default to. Um, but if you tighten up and then rock back, what you'll look for, what you're looking for, is this pelvic wink or that push your pelvic tilt. You'll see that that spine roll back. Okay, so what you're going to do is then separate about an inch or two wider, and you're going to come out and continue to rock back and get wider and wider. And what you're looking for, what you're looking for, is that the widest, the the best, most optimal stance for. Um, and maintaining a neutral spine. As soon as that neutral spine is lost under load, um, huge shearing forces go through the spine as well as you can cause some anterior hip pains or hip impingement. Um, what you'll find, I think, is that a lot of times many people are squatting too narrow, and so if you widen out your stance, it'll, it'll give you a better um, base in order to generate some power. The other thing to look for is, that I really like about this test, is the ability, you're looking at the athlete's ability to control their spine. If you are in an overextended position that pelvis is too far forward or anteriorly tipped, you will see a reversal early in that motion. So if you can unimpinge that hip with some anterior core contraction and better stability, you'll find that you can get a lot deeper and ultimately improve your performance in that squat um, without needing anything um, drastic as far as surgical measures or anything like that to unimpinge those hips.